On this episode of This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada, we've landed just outside Toronto in Caledon, Ontario for a brand new event, the Osprey Valley Open, where there's more than just a trophy at stake. And then, Lord, please let me win. Players swing into action as they pick up a new skill. There's like this tiny part of me that is like, I could do this. And now it's just, I've lost all hope. And later, we get to know Ben Griffin, who's having an all-star year. Talk to me about your, your first win. That was pretty sweet. Uh, unbelievable week. Before crowning a new champion. All that and more, next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada continues its journey through Ontario as we leave Thunder Bay to head to Caledon. And it's home to the third and final new event in the Mackenzie Tour lineup, the Osprey Valley Open. Part of a trio of courses, Osprey Valley's Toot Course is the backdrop for this year's inaugural event. This par 72 parkland style course, sitting at just over 7,100 yards, is a premier golf destination. It's a fantastic golf destination. It's one of those places that once you get here, you really feel like you're away. This is the best three course golf club, I think, in North America. It's exciting to, to have some of the uh, up and coming future PGA Tour stars playing here at Osprey Valley. You know, these guys are great golfers, so I expect some low scores. But as the season reaches its halfway mark, the chances to make it into the top five on the order of merit and earn a web.com tour card are slowly dwindling down. And every event is crucial. And if that weren't enough incentive, the Osprey Valley Open marks the final event for the top three players on the money list to earn an exemption into the RBC Canadian Open. Where past alumni Kramer Hickok, JJ Spawn, and Joel Damon have teed it up. So far, Zach Wright, George Cunningham, and Ben Griffin are the top contenders to walk away with these exemptions. But a solid week in Caledon could just be the factor to sway the odds. The Mackenzie Tour kicked off its inaugural Osprey Valley Open in Caledon, Ontario. And with a field of hopeful players with their eyes on more than a trophy, tensions were high as the final week to qualify for the PGA Tour's RBC Canadian Open commenced. Order of Merit leader Zach Wright looked to secure his spot at Glen Abbey with a hot start. After missing his first cut of the season at Thunder Bay, the American made up for it, carding six birdies and an eagle for an eight under 64. Alongside Wright were seven other players in a tie for third at eight under, including Timothy Madigan, who added six birdies to his scorecard on the back nine alone for a career best round. But the round of the day went to Lee Hodges, who looked to continue the momentum after a solo third finish in Thunder Bay the week before. It was a good round, you know, it was, uh, it's always fun to have those rounds and you feel like you can do no wrong. I got off to kind of a slow start. I mean, I was even through five and then just kind of Made a good putt on six, and then kind of just got my round going. In just his fourth tournament of the season, Hodges pulled together nine birdies to just one bogey and a hole-out eagle on the 12th to close out with a personal record 62, earning him the number one spot on the leaderboard at 10 under. Just some really good golf going on out here right now. Just a lot of good players out here, so you got to bring your A game every day. Hodges takes a one-stroke advantage into round two while a chase pack of eight sit just two back. After the break, players oh. keep their skills sharp. I'm building one of these when I get home. Before cutting down the competition. And later, the action continues in Caledon as round two of the Osprey Valley Open gets underway, when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Before the start of the Osprey Valley Open, 
Mackenzie Tour players took aim at a different target with far shot axe throwing. Hey guys, I'm Ben from Far Shot Recreation. Today we're going to be throwing axes. Uh, we are also members of the World Axe Throwing League, which means that we compete with other club members all around the world. And last year we did actually win the world championships. So we're going to teach you guys how to throw first, and once everyone's confident and comfortable in throwing, we're going to play some games. Sweet. Put your left foot right about here for me. Your right hand's going to hold the bottom of your handle. You bring your axe right back over your head. All the way on your back foot, you're going to lean forward as you throw, keeping your eyes on those red circles. Oh! oh. We may have a natural on our hands here. Uh-oh. But yeah, once you guys are confident, we'll switch it up, get someone else in here then. Yeah, yeah. She's going to lean forward, fully extending your arms as you throw. So it's a full chopping motion. Wait. Just, like, how do you even? Oh, and there it is. Now we've got your perfect twist of your wrist. He's in the kill zone. Three throws, high score wins. Take it. Got it. Derek takes it. Yeah. Four, two. Well done. <laughs> oh, that's no fun. Talk to our Derek and Michael. And we are going to do a full match. We are going to do 10 throws, which means five throws each. After five throws, switch sides, five more throws. Oh! This is your final axe. Kill shots are alive. Michael, you're down by five. Three, two, one throw. Oh, so hard. And Derek takes that. 34 points, Derek. Good match. Jeez. Good match. 34 30. That was fantastic. Derek Barron may have finished on top of the leaderboard amongst the golfers, but he was put to the test, going head to head against world axe throwing wow. champion Chris Morning. The Lord, please let me win. You ready, Derek? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh, see? This is throw five, the score is 20 to seven. There's like this tiny part of me that is like, I could do this. And now it's just, I've lost all hope. Coming back here next year, I'm not even gonna play the tournament. I'm just coming straight <laughs> to this yard. So this is your final ax. Those kill shots are alive. The score is 45, Chris. 23, Derek. Bro. Aw, good job. Hey, World champion, I had no chance from the get-go. Ben, I uh, want to thank you guys for having us out. All right, thank you It's been a lot guys. of fun. You learned guys to, were great today. Learned that I uh, have no career in throwing axes. A lot of fun. As day two of the Osprey Valley Open rolled in, a new leader climbed atop the leaderboard, Tyler McCumber. With an impressive first round already under his belt, McCumber headed into the second round of competition with a little extra confidence. It's definitely nice. I have been playing some good golf, and it's finally clicking, and uh, it's nice to kind of put it all together. And it was a good day indeed, as he collected nine birdies and an eagle to close out with a new course record, 11 under par 61. Played good today. Obviously had uh, got some momentum going at the turn with that eagle. Um, Hit a bit of a lull, but was still hitting it good, putting good, uh, giving myself some chances. Up until really the eighth hole, my 17th hole. Had a good look at it, but it got low quick. Overall, pretty fun day. The 27-year-old put himself in good standing heading into moving day, building a five-stroke lead over Drew Weaver and Lee Hodges, who tied for second. It's always good to be in the hunt. Having a chance to win, and that's why we play the game. Jonathan Kahn posted a four under 68 to grab hold of solo fourth, and a group of four are tied for fifth, seven strokes off McCumber's lead. After the break, we tune in with Ben Griffin, who's giving a new meaning to scratching out birdies. One of my buddies back at college gave me like a DJ set turntable, so I've been messing around with that. And later, we check out all the action on moving day at the Osprey Valley Open, when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. There's a buzz in the air, and it's all about this year's breakout star, Ben Griffin. 
In his McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada debut, the 22-year-old from North Carolina is showing everyone just what he's made of. With one top 25 and three top 10 finishes, including a win in Thunder Bay at the Stahl Foundation Open presented by T-Baytel, Ben Griffin has climbed into third on the order of merit. And we tracked him down in Caledon for this week's On the Bag. Talk to me about your, your first win. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Uh, unbelievable week from start to finish. Everything about the week was just really fun. Just a lot of a lot of support for the tournament. It was really cool to pick one up there in Thunder Bay. Winning out here is kind of key if you're you're trying to um, you know try to be on, be in that top five. If you're not if you're not winning, it's going to be really tough to be there. Your dad made quite the trip to surprise you. Tell us about his journey and what it, what it meant to have him there. Yeah, it was uh, pretty crazy that he, that he showed up. He tried to get to Thunder Bay, um, and it was just kind of it was kind of a weird weird way to get there. He had to fly into Minneapolis, and then he drove eight hours with a rental car all the way up to Thunder Bay to catch me. Uh, I was on my tenth hole. He doesn't like to follow my rounds, but he uh, he was out there and told me good drive after I had my tenth tee ball. I turned to my left. It was him. Such a cool moment to kind of you know share that with him, and uh, pretty spectacular the way it all it all worked out. He talked about the camaraderie out here on his tour. It's pretty cool. There's uh, I think there's 20 of us or so that are just fresh out of college that uh, all got status out here. In general, the whole tour, all the guys are um, good guys, and it's it's just fun to hang around and kind of travel up here together with everyone. Who's been your biggest influence in golf? I mean, my dad got me into the game, so I've got to give him credit first uh, you know he was the one that got me started and got me in all the tournaments and supported me throughout junior golf but I think a lot of the guys are young on tour I think those those are good guys to look up to um, to kind of show that you know you can come out of college and get on tour and win quick now I hear you're quite the DJ a second career maybe uh, give me some details about your your, <laughs> uh, your second life as a DJ yeah everyone's been talking about it uh, yeah one of my buddies back at college he uh, Gave me like a DJ set turntable, so I've been messing around with that all summer. I like to, you know, listen to a lot of music, and um, yeah, I just started mixing around with it just to try to like, you know, make some cool transitions and stuff. So it's fun. It's something to do in my free time, and I've enjoyed it. All right, before we let you go, a right. rapid fire, okay? Favorite musician and song. Right now, get what you give, Felix Cartel. Favorite travel destination. Uh, I like to go to the Bahamas. Favorite meal to prepare? Pretty good at making PB&Js. I know it's pretty impressive, but yeah, I'm pretty good at those. Favorite meal to have made for you? Uh, probably, uh, you know, grill out some steaks or something like that. Your dream golf foursome? Dream golf foursome. Arnold Palmer is still alive, definitely him. Tiger Woods, Justin Thomas or Jordan Spieth, someone like that. Even Michael Jordan, I feel like that would be cool. Look into the future for yourself. What, what would you like to see uh, lay out for you in life? Um, you know, I just hopefully a long, healthy career in golf. Uh, that's my goal, to try to get on the PGA Tour. So if I can get there, I think I'll achieve basically all of my, uh, all of my goals. And then after that, hopefully raise a family and uh, find something else to do. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Have Appreciate week, it. Eh? Yeah. On moving day of the Osprey Valley Open, round two leader Tyler McCumber started with a five-stroke advantage over the rest of the field. Although the chase pack wouldn't make it easy for him, several early contenders, like Alabama's Lee Hodges, fell off his blistering pace after a third round 69. Drew Weaver and Jonathan Kahn managed to keep up, seizing the opportunity to put pressure on McCumber with matching 67s. Starting his round in solo fourth, Kahn bolted out of the gate early with an eagle on one. And he gained momentum throughout the day, netting four more birdies to just one bogey to get into a tie for third. Weaver also had a solid day, but his best efforts to catch McCumber still came up short. He carted five birdies for a bogey-free 67 on day three for solo second. 36-hole leader McCumber did his part, extending his lead from five to a record-breaking seven-stroke advantage. The 27-year-old Florida native matched eight birdies against just one bogey for a seven under 65. It was a good day, I hit it really well. It sort of Sort of did everything pretty pretty solid, um, you know. Came out with a birdie, so I got the momentum going early. And as you can tell from the scores and everyone in the field, there's a lot of birdies to be made. So you just can't get tentative. You got to keep firing and, and keep trying to make birdies and eagles. And with that, 
The University of Florida grad played his way to the top of the leaderboard for the second consecutive day, and he was very strategic in doing so. It's pretty uh, favorable to someone who can hit it uh, straight and longer, and this week I'm, I'm hitting it pretty straight and uh, hitting it solid, so uh, the fairways are firming up. So if you get kind of a hot ball with no spin, you can really, really get it out there like 350, 360 on some of these drives. So whenever you're kind of attacking it like that off the tee, it gives you a good chance at you know, making some, some lower numbers on these holes. With a win, the 25th ranked player on the order of merit could move all the way up into the fourth spot. I know my tendencies, I know what to do in sort of managing the nerves. I want to be nervous, we all do, you know, that's a good thing. And with only five events left in the season, using those nerves could just be the secret sauce he needs to get to the next level of competition. Coming up next, Mackenzie Tour veteran Michael Gligic is working his way through the season. Ball striking's just gotten a bit better and you know, I've been able to put some good rounds together. And later, a new champion is crowned as we check out the conclusion of the Osprey Valley Open, when this is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Canada, Michael Gligic. In his fifth season on the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada, seasoned veteran Michael Gligic is working hard, and it's paying off. He's climbed to sixth in birdie average and 21st in scoring average. I got my game to a you know, spot where I was in contention the last two weeks and feeling, I can honestly say I'm feeling good now. So I think just keep doing what I'm doing and it'll take care of itself. The 28-year-old from Burlington, Ontario has had continuous close calls with two top 25s and two top 10s this season, including his highest finish, a share for second at the Windsor Championship. Windsor was a close one. You know, I knew I had a good chance, but you know, the players are so good out here. So you make a couple pars and other guys are making birdies and you're just gonna get lapped a little bit. So Mark played great down the stretch and made a couple birdies and I was just kinda stumbling in with a few pars. So that was the difference. Gligic has tasted success before, working his way up to the web.com tour in 2017, where he posted one top 10 and he's made some adjustments which will help get him back to the next level of competition. I've gained a lot of confidence in the putter. That was a big one for me ever since switching to the claw. And then, yeah, ball striking's just gotten a bit better and, you know, I've been able to put some good rounds together. Currently sitting 14th on the order of merit and within striking distance of the top five halfway through the season, a win could be the crucial factor he needs to walk away with a web.com tour card at season's end. Heavy rains accompanied the final round of the Osprey Valley Open. Although she didn't rain on Tyler McCumber's victory parade, Mother Nature definitely added a bit of drama to the toot course during the final 18 holes. Heading into Sunday with a seven-stroke advantage, the largest 54-hole lead in McKenzie Tour history, McCumber avoided the costly mistakes and managed an even par 72 in some of the toughest conditions of the season. They changed shoes at the turn and socks and not one dry towel. I used the rain glove for about 14 holes, so it was, it was a grind. McCumber's challengers played well, but his lead was too much to overcome. Drew Weaver posted a two under par 70 on Championship Sunday and finished in a tie for third. Meanwhile, Jonathan Kahn struggled to a one over 73 and settled for a tie for eighth. With the lowest round of the day, a seven under 65, Michael Gellerman worked hard to close the gap, and he made it interesting with an incredible hole out from the fairway on 18 for Eagle to get within two shots of McCumber, who was struggling to get it on the green in three. It was a really good wedge shot to that pin. That front of that green's severely sloped, and he landed it past the hole. Where long of that pin is so bad, obviously went in and kind of made me have to refocus. McCumber managed to get it on the putting surface in four, and two putted for bogey and a one-stroke victory. This is big for me, um, and you know, obviously my team. You know, I've been working really hard with my dad on the mental stuff. Since I was injured a year ago, I had my shoulder redone. I haven't really sort of put it together since, um, and so it's nice to get some momentum going. With the victory, 
the Florida native becomes the third player to win on both the McKenzie Tour and PGA Tour Latino America and jumps into the top five on the order of merit. Uh, very happy, obviously, with the week. I'm feeling good, uh, have a lot of confidence, and just ready to kind of keep it going. McCumber vaulted up 21 spots into fourth, just behind George Cunningham, Sam Fedone, and Zach Wright all of whom earned exemptions into this week's RBC Canadian Open. Zach Wright had the number one position locked up entering the Osprey Valley Open. I think I've outplayed a little bit of my goals so far. I expected to come up here and play well, so going week to week and just trying to buckle down and keep playing well. After a long, you know, seven events up here, you kind of get a nice reward of, you know, getting a PGA Tour event. With a T8 finish in Caledon, Sam Fedone jumped from fourth into second place on the money list and he will play in his first ever PGA Tour event this week. Already a champion on PGA Tour Latino America and the McKenzie Tour, the experience at Glen Abbey will be a new one for the lefty from Texas. My first PGA Tour event ever. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I, I played my way in, so I got some good momentum. Hopefully I can post some good numbers. I'm really, really looking forward to the experience and, and the opportunity and, and see, what I'm, see what I'm made of against the best players in the world. Canadians Jared Dutois and Michael Gligic will be joining this trio in Oakville. Dutois received a sponsor's exemption and looks to improve on his T9 finish as an amateur in 2016. While Ontario native Gligic Monday qualified and will be teeing it up in the Canadian Open for the third time. Next time, we're off to Edmonton for the Syncrude Oil Country Championship presented by Acon where last year Patrick Newcomb netted his first of two wins on McKenzie Tour Fairways. Who will walk away with the title this year? Find out when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada returns after the RBC Canadian Open.